hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much. Welcome, Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big P here, and still, I'm going to ring Stephen Wellings from uh, the Boxing <coughs> Asylum. He's the host. He lives in Ireland. I think he's a Wolves fan, is he? Like Dale Nichols. <laughs> How are we doing, Steve? Not too bad, how are you? I'm alright, mate. I thought I'd give my old pal Steve Wellings a ring. What's been happening in the, in the world of boxing? Shout out to Innovation Alloys, yeah. If you need any alloy wheels, go see Innovation. Uh, right, we'll go balls deep like the old school days we used to do, Steve, eh? Yeah, yeah. Right, here we go. Question one. Question one. Joshua Pulef, does it happen, or does Pulef take step aside money, or... Will it be a fight too far for Eddie Earn rinsing it if it happens? Well, who am I going to take their step aside money? What about who am I going to take step aside money? So it will happen in some form, whether it's in a stadium or behind closed doors or what, I don't know, but it will happen. And I think Pooley will give Joshua a few problems, but Eddie's going to have to watch himself now because he's going to have to start making a bit of money, isn't it? Yeah. Uh. I've actually met Poole F in Bulgaria, he's actually a nice guy and so are his uh, team, they were decent people. They've waited long enough, haven't they? They've waited long enough. Uh, this is how I look at it. Poole F's 40 next birthday, isn't it? So, it's a gimme fight if Joshua fights him, isn't it? Do the belts even matter now, Steve? Yeah, I think Tyson Fury was the number one. He beat the man, didn't he? Mm. Who had the best belt. But well, what about Fury with Sugar Hill? Do you think that's working out? Well, you couldn't fault him on that on that uh, showing, could you, against Wilder? But the proof will be in the pudding after the third fight, won't it, really? Yeah. I, I think, think he should have left Peter, though, personally. I think that, that was a good team. Well, in, with Peter in his corner... Tyson Fury never hit the deck once. Never hit the deck once. I know people might say, Porky, you got that wrong, he got dropped against Cunningham. But Clifton Mitchell was in the in the corner, not Peter. So Peter had visa problems. They got they got caught, didn't they, coming through Canada on train? <laughs> oh, only Furies could do that, couldn't they? <laughs> but I don't really want to comment on that why they've split up, but they've gone the separate ways, haven't they? But I don't agree with it. He went 17 and 0 with Yui Fury Senior, who died, bless him, and he went 8 and 0 with Peter. Now, so it, what isn't broke, you don't. What's not broke, you don't fix, do you know? So, so, whatever, it, whatever that saying is, is that right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, that's the one. So, yeah. I don't know. It's a strange one, isn't it? It's it's a, a, Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, if I did ask him, I'd probably say, look, it's, you know, family situation. It's not something that they really talk about, any of them, so I don't really think it's any of my business, but, you know, I'm brave enough to ask him, so I might do next time I see him, but I don't think it's important now. I think they've all gone the separate ways, haven't they? And it's a shame, isn't it? It is a shame, but Fury's number one, but if you thought Joshua, then I would pick Fury to 
Yeah, you pick. He'd be a massive favourite against Joshua, wouldn't he? Because he don't really get it, does he, Tyson? Very rarely well, I gets think, it. I think Pulev would give. I think Pulev would give uh, Joshua trouble. You know, Pulev's a tough fucker. And he, and he came, like he's fast, isn't he? I know he's 40 and all that, but he has an awkward style for Joshua. Yeah, but Richard Towers told Paul F about Vladimir. He said, you want to watch him? He's got a tough left hook because he'd sparred him. And, and uh, Paul F said, nah, I'm tough. Well, Vladimir iced him, didn't he? He left, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, he, and Paul F's not that fighter that fought Vladimir six years ago, is he? He's six yeah, years on, and he's in the first round, he? yeah, he did. Yeah, but that way he just came out and had a good round one, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. But he's not thirty-four next birthday. He's forty next birthday, and I think that is going to be the defining, defining difference, whatever they call it. Joshua's been very, very carefully matched, Steve. Come on, he's been wrapped in cotton wool. When has Joshua been in a fight where it's been a fifty-fifty? And he's not been the favourite. When has he been in a fight and we've said, you know what, Joshua's going to get beat tonight. What fight have we seen though that's happened? That's true. They're talking about a rematch with Martin down the line though. What are you, what are you <laughs> I mean, I've heard something today that nearly collapsed. Robert Ilenius could be next if he fights Pula. And they're going to say it's our managers, we want to keep our belts, we've worked hard for them. They got them belts up through back door, didn't they? What, in that second round? Yeah, yeah. Who stopped it? Howard Foster? I can't remember the referee. Well, no, it was a foreign referee, I think, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. Who's that referee that we always say could stop a bus at 120 miles an hour? Ian John Lewis, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So... Steve Schmoger, he let some go on, didn't Steve what? Steve Schmoger, do you remember him? He, 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 would, he would let me go out and stretch at that point. Yeah, Steve Smoger, he, he, uh, yeah, he's all for American fighters though, isn't he? Have you seen that article, The Curious Case of Steve Smoger on the internet? Hardcore boxing fans, go and, re go and Google Steve Smoger. And it's a story, I think, by Thomas Hauser. Very, very interesting. He's a judge, him, you know. He's a, he's a federal judge. Right, then, moving on. Question two. Billy Joe Saunders against Canelo, will it happen and will Billy Joe Saunders get a fair shake in Vegas? No, because I don't think it'll happen, they'll look elsewhere and get somebody else, probably Callum Smith or something like that, or maybe a Yeah, I think Frank were putting out fires all the time for Billy Joe because he's a bit of a live wire, isn't he? But live wire, but he's got skills to burn, hasn't he? His skills are. Have you seen that Bruce Lee where the film where he goes, "Your skills are extraordinary." Well, that's like Bill, isn't it? His skills are extraordinary, and I just think that it'd be a shame if you don't get the Canelo fight, but. <laughs> oh, no, I'll buy it, mate. No. I'm here on my own all the time, though, so I don't see anybody. Right. Do you know what I mean? But, uh, alright then, well, moving on from Billy Joe. Uh, well, you just said you think that if Canelo leaves Oscar Delaroy, you think, you think he'd be finished, don't you, yeah? Yeah. Do you think if Daniel Dubois left Frank Warren that he'd be in trouble? Well, you'd think that, but Frank just keeps reinventing himself. TV stations leave him, companies go down. And Bill Ives throwing 15 million into the pot. Yeah, he keeps reinventing himself, so I would say it would be a blow to Frank, but no. Um, you know, you put a stake through his heart and you won't stop him from promoting boxing. Do you remember when they wheeled Bill Ives out at that, uh, a few years ago at that? 
press conference, everybody was saying, who's that old guy there? Hey? Is he that guy from Rainham Steel, wasn't he? Yeah, they wheeled him out, and you've got to give Frank Warren his dues, he always seems to survive. He could survive a nuclear blast, and we know what the only things that survive nuclear bla blast, aren't they? It's cockroaches, isn't it? <laughs> so Frank could survive a nuclear blast, but like I said, he's not got a promotional deal, has he, with Fury? I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that, but if Fury retires and Dubois leaves him, He's a bit fed bro, isn't he? You mean Tyson Fury? Yeah, Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely is, yeah. Do you think Frampton's finished? Yeah, I think Frampton's finished. Yeah, if he's not finished, he's close to finished. I don't think these um, delays are doing him any help, you know, any help. Especially yeah. with his hand, the hand injury, but the, the operation. I don't think that fight with Herring will take place in Windsor Park. They might move it over to America and depending on what happens in that, that could be the last time we see him, but a big old unit too, up at Super Featherweight, that'll be a tough ask for Frampton as that fight goes on, so it would be interesting to see, but if he gets past Herring or or if he doesn't, it, I don't think he'll have too many fights beyond that, if at all. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh... What about Anthony Yard? Uh, what do you think about him? Do you think he'll stay with Frank? Um, no, all the best ones leave Frank eventually, so he'll probably go. But I don't know. Yard's irrelevant here, really. He put up a good performance against Kovalev, but that, that didn't serve as much of a gauge because before that, we haven't seen him really fighting anybody. So we have to see him fighting against someone on his level. Like Boatsy. Um, Would you would you pay to see Boatsy versus Yard? I wouldn't pay for it. I wouldn't pay for anything, so I'm maybe the wrong person to ask. But I would I would definitely want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Liam Cameron, drug issue, four year ban. He's been on Richard Poxon's uh, podcast. Uh, what do you think to his four year ban? Yeah. In the context, he's an easy target because you can't on fit for purpose. They're not going to go after the big boys, but someone like Cameron is perfect for them to make an example of. I haven't heard the interview with Richard Poxon, but I know I heard Richard Poxon's one of boxing's good guys. Fuck you know. Yeah. Well, that's, that opinions vary. They say, don't they? <laughs> If I'd have had him on my channel, I would have gone after him with some proper questions. But it's your channel. You, you guys do. He's not going to come on here. Listen, I've got his email. He doesn't even reply to my email. Send him my, my phone and run an email. Richard Poxon, grow a pair and ring me. And let's have your channel and let's straighten this out. All right? Come see me. But, uh, all right then. Liam Cameron, four year ban. Tyson Fury failed for Nandrolone. Failed for cocaine and refused a test at another date. So three drug issues, two year ban. Liam Cameron, one charge, four year. Is that fair? No. No, it isn't, is it? So we wish Liam Cameron well. Uh, I don't personally think he'll fight again. Four year out at rings a long, a long time, isn't it? Uh, Liam's put a ton of weight on. Well, let's wish him well because he's in a dark place. Moving on, Callum Smith against Ryder rematch, will it happen? I think it will happen, they need to do something with Callum Smith, people weren't happy with it apart from Gallagher, so as long as they keep putting the pressure on, then hopefully they'll make the rematch. I think John Ryder deserves the rematch, he's put up a good show and they're expecting to just flip by him, but Callum Smith could be a waste of time, he should have had bigger fights by now. And I hold probably him, maybe Gallagher responsible, but also Dean has a lot to answer for. I think that, you know, Dean needs to step up and say, look, we need to make these big fights now. And I know that you've been a critic of Dean in the past and I'm starting to shift myself, so maybe a bit more Bean related content is what needed in the future. <laughs> bean related content. Bean! Run a bean, could have been, should have been, never been, baked bean, creepy bean, bean it! You'll love it when I do Bean, don't you, Steve? He's a good guy, Bean, though, isn't he? He's a boxing man. Yeah, he's all right. He just looks a bit dodgy, doesn't he? I can't get over his dodginess. 
Now, my argument with Mr. Bean, I'm going to lay it. In these current conditions, though, Bean's doing his best. He might hot foot it over to the zone, you know. Listen, let me tell you this. Bean tried to hot foot it to Satanta when pressure were on years ago. So, Bean will look after Bean when it comes down to it. My argument with Bean is this. Stop putting spin. You are the spin doctor. Stop spinning stories out of control like some of the things he comes out with. Like that bombing thing, whatever he said. What were all that about? And that Manchester bombing. What? The man... Right, he's a hype machine. And if anybody wants to know about Bean, go and watch Carl Froch against Brian McGee. When he knocks Brian McGee out, watch what Bean does. He goes into full Bean mode. And I, I, I just lose my mind with, with Bean. I've met Bean a few times, like, and I, he's not my cup of tea. He reminds me of, you know, when you're at school, he's one of them kids who's really brainy and he's doing physics or something. And he stumbles into science class where, you know, all, all retards like me are. And they're like, fucking hell, what's he doing in this classroom here? He's in the wrong classroom. He reminds me of one of them kids who wants to knock about with cool kids. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I always am a bean. But I just can't help it. He's just, he's just a spin doctor. And plus, Ozzy don't like him, so I don't. Sometimes in life, Steve, we just don't like people. If you don't like them... That's it, I said, I don't, I don't feel it for Bean. I just don't feel it, mate, for him. Uh-huh. Bean, and there's a few of us I don't. I just get he's to hear things and I... He's a creepy fucker, isn't he? Hey? That's why I said he's a creepy fucker, but I probably shouldn't be swearing on this channel, so he You're all right, mate, you can swear on here, mate. It's, you, 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 my, my house is welcome to you, mate. But moving on from Bean, let's move on to how would Ron Lyle have fared back fared these days if we'd have fought I don't mean Danny Sobson I mean the proper Ron Lyle who, who terrorised George Foreman oh Ron Lyle how would he have fared today Ron Lyle was an absolute beast he was a big poncho he came forward he fought with George Foreman one of the all time great heavyweight fights he was a laid waste to a lot of these guys you couldn't have seen the likes of Robert Hellenius getting out of early rounds with old Ron Lyle <laughs> and it's out to Ron as well he had a colourful um, you know, he had a colourful career outside of the ring, but he also did a lot of good things as well. He was involved in sort of Parkinson's related to that stuff and a lot of charity work. And I have a, a lot of time for Ron Lyle, and I think he was, he was an excellent boxer. He would, have, he would have knocked out a fair few of these boys these days. Yeah, I, I think he would have done as well. I think he'd have been a top four guy. He'd have had a belt, wouldn't he? We guided correctly nowadays. Did you rate... He killed the streets, man. He killed, so he killed at least one per... I know the second one was a bit... Yeah. Worse. Yeah, I've, I've read I've read a bit about history about him today. Ron Ron Lyle wanted a guy to be to be uh, messed about with. If he come and knocking on your door for a few quid, you had to tip up to him. But uh, moving on then, did you rate Clinton Woods' career? Oh yeah, so you know I like Clinton Woods. Me talking about uh, Richard Poxon about Clinton. Yeah. Clinton was a was a hard fighter. He done things the right way. One, I remember the night he beat Rico Hoy. That was a quality fight. Clinton didn't a lot of stuff, you know, he didn't look publicity, there wasn't Twitter and all that, about at the time, so Clinton maybe doesn't get the due and the respect that he deserves, but no, I rate Clinton would, definitely. He were a world champion over three years, you know. Mm. That's yeah, good, isn't it? beating that fellow who died, Gonzalez, and he beat the Australian guy, was it Delisle, and yeah. he had a lot of things. Went in with Roy Jones, three times with Glenn Johnson. Yeah, Jones was a different level, though, wasn't he? Oh, Clinton will tell you that, he'll tell you that, yeah. Will Tommy Frank win an IBO world title versus Flores this September if it happens? Um, no, well, first of all, I don't care. Um, I don't really I not really that interested in Tommy Frank, to be honest with you. Uh, the, I do rate the IBO, though, you know, I'm a big fan of the IBO title. Yeah. I'm not sure about Flores. I'm going to say, uh, yes, that he beats Flores, yeah. Do you think... You don't rate Tommy because he pulled out of the Sonny Edwards fight, the British title fight. Nah, it's not that. I've, I've seen a bit of it. I, don't, I haven't seen that much of him to make a comment, really. I mean, I've seen him on free sports before um, against Dave, but I can't remember who he was fighting now. I remember Sam Sheedy on free sports. That was a good fight. That was Liam Cameron, wasn't it? Yeah, Liam, Liam and Sam, they had a right fight, didn't they? they did well, good fight. Liam obviously won it. 
He looked like a super middling wheel light middle on night, but Liam Cameron were pitch perfect that night, punch perfect. Are you the IBO title? Yeah, I do. I'm a massive IBO fan. I like the IBO, yeah. I like it, obviously. Well, well, how come you rate it for? What do you think it's worth? The reason I rate it is because when I got Frankie Gavin up to Dennis's office, I said, oh, Dennis, let's sign Frankie Gavin. And I kept pestering him for ages, and eventually Frankie came up with a kid called Dean, I think, and another lad. And it, we got in touch with IBO and made a world title fight for Frankie at Birmingham. It, it collapsed with two weeks to go, which broke my heart. But uh, I rate the IBO, I thought they were easy to deal with, and there's no politics with them, is there, like the, the others? They're just straight shooters, aren't they? Ed Levine, yeah, he's the head man there, so I think it's a good, it's good. And obviously years ago, Dennis were one of the first people to start working with him in, up here, you know. So, and everybody were like, IBO, IBO, well now they class it as the fifth belt, don't they? Yeah, that's true. Speaking of Dennis, there's a clip going about you giving Dennis a quality, and what's that all about? So, two years ago, after we went to the for a drink uh, an hotel in Leeds and have a, had a meal with IBF. It's a long story, but I ended up leaving Dennis in Leeds and I stormed off in his car. And when I put his car on his drive, I jumped in my car and uh, I sent obviously the message to him because I was raging. But it's all it's all good stuff, isn't it? If people want to put that out, I don't know how it's got out there, but I have a good idea, but. Stuff like that don't bother me, it's two years ago and you know, we've had a fight since then in Bulgaria. We didn't speak for four months after that and then last time I seen him after that, I was in Bulgaria, stood with Frank Smith and Peter Fury. Dennis came up to me and he jabbed me back doing his Ron Lyle impression. So I gave him a jab back, then I interviewed him within half an hour and then following night we had a bit of a scuffle in the lobby where I got him in an headlock threw him straight over me head in a judo move and he he punched me in my perspex and he bit me on the arm and he rubbed my head into I had a carpet burn on my head I looked like Gorbachev but it's all good stuff and after that we've we've never had a crossword that were 18 months ago nine not 20 since well you he's fighting Bulgaria so we've never had a crossword since then so people putting that out if they want to put silly porky corner accounts up or all these fake accounts and keep putting stuff that I've done out there. We think it's brilliant, me and some of my pals who, who've, been, who've been in boxing years because they're doing my job for me, Steve, because I am a bit controversial, I am a bit out there. So stuff like that's uh, water off a duck's back for me. It's food and drink, isn't it? But it doesn't bother me. Dennis ain't got a problem with it and we laugh about it. But I think a lot of people are trying to go around the houses to try and make things a bit difficult for me and put me in an awkward position maybe to get me a slap or maybe to get me shut down to keep complaining to youtube but no it seems to happen so i don't know mate maybe maybe people might not like my style but i'm only just getting warmed up i'm here for the long run i've got i'm not skint and i've got people behind me so this channel is going to be here for a long time so just to let all these trolls know Brilliant, keep at it. But what I will say while we're on this matter, when I go to shows, these same people come up to me and they say, how are you? And I say, I'm all right. And then they go off. That's it. That is it. There's only two people that have ever come up to me and said they didn't like something I've done on the channel. Robbie Barrett and Anthony Tomlinson. Nobody else has said a dicky bird. Nobody. Obviously, I've had run-ins with Dennis over the last few years up at his office where he's had his head in his hands. But, you know, everybody likes a bit of controversy and if anybody's got a problem, pick up the phone. It's not rocket science, is it, Steve? I know people who boxing industry who don't like other channels, but if you put your set out there and behave like you do, you've got to be prepared, haven't you? That's what I say, so all this bullying and threats and this and that, fuck, I've done 10 years over a 12 year period in jail. I've had everything done that's horrible that can be done to a human being, inside and outside jail. So, what, what, what is this to me? It's like, <laughs> laughing.
they're doing my job for me and of course I got 67 new subscribers off it <laughs> I woke up this morning and God it's gone up by 67 who's to get that in about three weeks <laughs> Ah, well, it don't matter. It's all good stuff, innit? It's all good stuff. Uh, so we've gone through that. Uh, what next for Josh Whale? Is he the Cinderella man? Uh, what do you think? Can I Dennis deliver good. for him? I think um, he's probably gonna done a good job with him. I thought Josh Whale was probably finished, but then he has one of their records where it's deceiving. You know, you could probably look at maybe a few of the losses and say, They've tried, well, it might be at Commonwealth, but I don't know, so that that's, uh, I'm not talking out of turn there. I'd like to think it'd be at Commonwealth or an IBO world title shot, me, that's where I'd like to think it'd be. It'd be a belt, I'd like to see him in a belt fight. He's 4-0 four, he's four and oh, uh, since he came to us, so I'd like to see him fight for a belt. I'd like to see him get an IBO world title at Barnsley. That belt's vacant, but we're going to see, aren't we? But now I've said that, you're going to get certain people in the area are going to try the best to block the arena, block the belts, uh, do some shady stuff on all the fake accounts and blah de blah so that's just how boxing is, it's just that when you're a bit wide eyed or maybe starry eyed like me you don't see it at first, you think everybody's your mate but it's like gangsters isn't it they come with smiles but they're not really your mates and it takes a long time to work it out don't, doesn't it I suppose do you know what I mean? But, He's just turned 32 last week, so I'd like to think that Josh has probably got another year left. Maybe another two fights, maybe three fights, who knows, but he doesn't I've drink. I've got his record up, idiot. I've got his record up, so he lost to Brad Foster, but Foster's decent, I think, so we've got Echo Wilson, Sergio Gonzalez. Where do you dig him up from, Russ? Is that the one at Barnsley? Uh, that's Ponds Forge, that one. That, is, that, is that the first fight we owed? The one at Barnes are the last one out, uh, that were a late replacement because the French kid who were fighting, who fought Josh Warrington for a world title, he agreed a purse of 14 grand, 13 and a half grand and then he came back and wanted 20 grand. Now this is just politics, if you've agreed a purse, 13 and a half grand Steve, you know yourself. And then you decide with three weeks to go, do you know what, I want 20 grand. So that's somebody behind the scenes whispering in his, in his ear. So he were told, thank you, but no thank you. So the, to save the show, they just had to get somebody in. But what about the 28 and 1 kid? Yeah, Felix Williams. Scott the Quigg didn't yeah. want him, did he? Lee Wood, they all didn't want him. Um, when right. when Dennis made that, that went out to do with me, that fact. When Dennis made it, I were like, woo. I was saying, yeah, yeah, it's a good fight, that, but I was really thinking, he's in an hard fight here, yeah? and the kid were in shape. So you've got to give credit where credit's due to Dennis for coughing up and bringing the kid over, because that was a great win, that, you know. No, that is a good win, because before he beat, uh, he lost to Josh, he beat Waid, 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 yeah, it's, yeah, I've been uh, in the prison canteen though, I don't think. I'm just checking it out here. Prison canteen. Yeah, talking about dedication, what about to you against Spencer Fearon? Spencer Fearon, 14 stone 12. I've got £8 to go. Come see me. There you go. If he wants it, come up to Sheffield, Spencer. Let's get it on, because we don't get along. But he's gone quiet on me, hasn't he, Spencer? You got my email, Spencer. Get in touch. So. What about sporting icons? Uh, I've got sporting icons details here, and I was going to put it out there, and uh, I would advise not to. So, yeah, why do you want to do that, man? You're just giving them, you're just fueling it. So I didn't bother. Uh, it, it, it went over my head because, trust me, I wanted to put it out, but you know I don't make all decisions around here. I'm only T by Anna now, but this is I don't get. 
Yeah, yeah, you are. I am a loose cannon. Sometimes I don't engage. I've got no filter, have I? I'm a bit like uh, Tai and Boo. He's got no filter. I just say it first thing that comes into me. I've done it, but there's that much rubbish and bullshit. I mean, I'd be here all day. You want to fight, uh, fighting people and going back and forth. This is why I don't bother with Twitter. But it's nice that people, like some of, some of people on my WhatsApp, keep sending me uh, screenshots. And there's one of me with Mr. T haircut and. Big fat bloke I am. We uh, even though I'm not as not as fat as I used to be. Uh, we loads of chains on and, and I'm I'm sat on a, a bench I think like some dosser. <laughs> We're begging begging bowl or something. So some of these people have got a lot of time on their hands I think, can't they? But it's all good in it. I take it on chin. If you can't give it, if you can't give it, don't. If you can't take it, don't give it. So to speak, and old my old coal mining uh, same for you there, yeah, but. No, no, you know you're you're a witty uh, little fucker for a wolves fan, aren't you? <laughs> Mo moving on then, uh, Coogie Bear and Rob Tever, they seem to be getting a lot of uh, hate off the hardcores, don't they? Uh, lately, what do you think? Ah, uh, well, it's tough times trying to put content out, isn't it? Coogie's doing his best, Rob Tever's doing his best, and they're all Hard worker. Ten years ago, putting the work in. It takes ten years to become an overnight success. So I don't really begrudge Coogan his success, to be honest. Yeah. Do you think that Rob Tebbett gets too much stick for back piggybacking on back of him and all that kind of thing? And I don't know. Do you think he gets a bit of stick? Because it's an hard job, you know that. I don't know, and I won't comment. The only reason that I really don't follow that um, Ross, I don't see who gives him stick or what he says or what. Yeah. I really don't know what I don't know what people say or don't say to be honest. Go on Steve with splinters in arse. Well, he gets a lot of stick. They both do, but let me tell you this. It's an hard job. I think Rob Tebbert's questions are good, but I don't think they push them at the right time. I think Coogan's very good at drawing things out people, but if he tends to go quiet if there's a sticky situation, he's got it off to a fine art now. Whereas at the beginning they didn't, but as you move along doing this and speaking in front of the camera, it becomes very easy. Like, look at me in 800 and odd videos now, Anna. So I've sort of like got a bit better than I were two and a half year ago. But I just think that they could put Frank under a bit more pressure and Eddie Earn under a bit more pressure, but I don't think they do. I don't think they do. They could ask Eddie Earn about the shows being watered down, about StubHub and about there's just just na general knackers that he comes out with about he's been contacted by four software firms to make a boxing game well who are these software companies Coogan why don't you ask him because if he's throwing EA games into the mix and they've knocked him back why can't he say who's interested instead of because we all know that's rubbish I don't believe a word of it this is how I look at it and I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything whatever people say in boxing 90% of it, you should look to the opposite. Whatever they say, look to opposite. And 90% of the time, you will be right. I don't want to be giving it the old David Icke here, but I've heard that much rubbish and counter rubbish and ru Steve, get 30 death threats a day, mate. <laughs> Walking about free as a bird. It's rubbish, mate. This is what you're involved in here. It's insecure men. Oh, 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 uh, trying to control boxing and get the sons out there. When the two biggest stars in the world in boxing, Joshua and Canelo, they don't even trash talk, do they? Yeah, so, you get 30 death threats a day. 30 death threats a day, Steve, 30, mate. Emails. You are. I get death, 30 death threats a day, mate. 30 death threats. And you know the best thing about it is? These have put, these here behind me here, put a few quid into these tech guys. And the funny thing is, it's amazing what you can do on a computer, innit? What you can find out. In it, you know that yourself, don't you? If you get the right sort of equipment. And some of the stuff is just mind blowing. We can, we, we're in a position now where we can predict 
who's going to text at what time within 15 minutes but I just said I don't want to hear about all that just send me the death threats because I like to read them because I know that I'm doing my job right if I get death threats so bring them on <laughs> pokycorner at mail.com but what I haven't had, I'm going to be fed to alligators. But I've had the pit bull one. That's a good one, isn't it? The pit bull. Me and Rocky are going to get fed to this guy's pit bulls. So. Is that going back to the likes of Coogan and then that there's some questions they're told in advance? Like you can't be asked. Yeah, come on. We, look, well, if you've got to sit down, we had here. They're not just going to like us, going to do it off cuff. If you've got to sit down, we had here, and they want to know what questions they're going to ask. I mean, look at that with Frank Warren, what come out. That were all stage, wasn't it? Well, what we're asking them and stuff like that. So if they're going to stage questions with people, well, it's not off cuff, is it? It's all like fake, isn't it? It's like that that Dillian White thing, the Dillian White situation in that in that Sky Studio with Chisora when he were ranting and raving like a like a, a, a South London Bermondsey Brixton whatever accent, and then when he's on AFL, he's talking yardy. Talking rubbish, but when he's on Sky 4 rolling about, his uh, my old man's a dustman. She wears a dustman's hat, whatever. It's Cockney, isn't it? So I, I don't buy into all that fakeness. Dillian White, when he fought Joshua, it, they said it were all real, didn't they? The, the 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 beef. But what about the beef now? The best mates, aren't they? Why is that? So it's not beef, is it? Frotch Groves were beef, yeah. David A and Bellew weren't beef. That weren't they were, beef. There weren't beef between White and Joshua, but they were playing it up, weren't they, because of that amateur loss that they had the pre made fight there, you know, really yeah. to be made. Like, I, I interviewed Gillian White myself before he became famous. He was on a Frampton undercard. And to be perfectly honest with you, I found him all right. He was a nice enough fella. Yeah. He was talking about Joshua even then. He'd just come out of the Klitschko camp where he'd been sparring. Yeah. So it's been going on for a while, but you can understand why they made the fight. Now obviously Eddie wasn't anticipating on Joshua getting hurt with a left hook and buzzed up and then all them mad, you know, remember they all ran in the ring after the first round because there was a bit of, there was a, something went on after the bell, didn't it? But He's got a right he left hook, hasn't he? Hmm? He's got a right left hook. Yeah. It's best left hook in boxing, that, you know, in every way, in every way it's... Wilder's its best right hand, is its best left up, but I just think he's a one trick pony, Dillian White. And I think he struggles to go at a pace for 12 rounds. Yeah, he probably does, but he's got some good wins, hasn't he? For, you said yourself, for someone who's earned all this money and he's never fought for a European title. Never fought for a European title, and he's had what, four pay per views? So that about. Frotch only had three. Well, if he does numbers on IFL, that's it. But it should be about talent, shouldn't it? But the kid has got talent. We have to give him his due. But should Dillian White have fought for a world title by now? Yeah. He's oh. hard done too, hasn't he? He's been kept down, suppressed by the system for the last two years. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that, Stephen. You know that. <laughs> he didn't fight Pulef, did he? No. He didn't fight Ortez? No. He didn't fight Joshua at Wembley for five, for four belts, four belts, five million quid, 90,000 tickets at Wembley in his own town against another London kid and he didn't take that fight. Who did he fight instead? Oscar Rivers? What is, what, what is he in the sport for? Could you imagine Henry Cooper saying to Ali, do you know what Ali, or Cassius Clay, whatever he were called then, I don't fancy fighting you at Wembley in front of 42,000 people. Now I'm going to fight Dave Allen. Do you know what I mean? I don't fancy fighting for heavyweight championship at World. I'm going to fight uh, whoever from that era. Uh, somebody from that era, but Oscar Bonavida. I'll fight him. I'll fight Oscar Bonavida for no belt. I don't want to fight Ali for the heavyweight championship of the world. So, as far as I'm concerned, it, it just doesn't bode well with me at all, mate. It doesn't bode well with me. But it is what it is, isn't it? Sky wants feel good stories, doesn't it? Like Terry Harper, that's a story we can all get behind. That's a good, that's a good feel good story, isn't it? That's a good feel. They've done well here, haven't they? And you've got to give credit to Steffi Bull for delivering because he's put his money where his mouth is and got got her in position with that IBO, hasn't he? So you've got to give credit where it's due through good teeth. 
But you've got to give him credit there. He's gone out and he's got that girl of world title. Got him with Eddie Hearn and they've done rest, haven't they? So that is good. That's a good story. So I like stories like that. Plus she's DN12, isn't she? So that's good. But uh, other than that, how are you, Steve? Are you all right? You're teetotal, aren't you? Yeah, teetotal, keeping well, not too bad. What, I, what about you? I'm teetotal, mate, uh, 23 days, but it's, uh, it's scary! It's very scary, mate, let me tell you. I keep thinking, is this it? Is this it? What, what's it all about? I've never had so much money in my pocket lately. <laughs> I keep looking in my pocket and pulling, pulling money out, thinking I should have spent that by now. I keep going home and saying I've not spent anything. Porky's Corner, uh, there's, there's some in pipeline at the moment that's going on behind the scenes and it's going to be me driving it and I've nearly we've nearly put it all together, it's just a case of uh, the people behind the scenes, it's hard to explain but obviously I don't make all decisions now but the future probably could be other things except boxing and um, the, the red tape involved with what we've got lined up is unbelievable and it's starting to do my head in but all this got to be here there and everywhere at certain times and that's doing my head in but it's obviously I've dragged it up from the start it was only a gimmick wasn't it a bit of a laugh this wasn't it we were just here to cut get rid of the <laughs> we're just here to get rid of bullshit but it sort of like took on a life of itself and people are helping me behind the scenes and you know I'm impressed I think I've had a bit of luck I'm quite blessed although there is a, there is a lot we can do with it and if I can help your channel in any way by a bit of sponsorship down the line get all your lads a bit of a drink you know on a weekend or something who'll go on your channel something like that I mean I'm Mr Five here Right, can't be intense, intense beef. What, what about uh, sexy spam or bad bacon or laughing lobster? Why can't we think of or, or lunatic luncheon meat? Why can't we think of summer instead of intense beef? You find shops across the bar now, Porky, after week wellings. <laughs> <laughs> Fired shots across the bar. You're a dry fucker, you Steve, aren't you? Fired shots across the bar. That's a good one. That I like that one. I like that one. Brilliant. Yeah, Ross, I have a question for you just before we close up. You see, um, helmet of the month. Are you still doing that? Yeah, we still do that. The votes uh, have to be in for twenty ninth. So that that's different from weapon of the week, though. Weapon of the week is what I pick. Helmets of the month is what the boxing followers pick. Do people really send in nominations, though? Or do you? Yeah, of course they do. Yeah, they send them in. Yeah. There's some proper hardcores out there. It's the same old people all the time. I want it to be different. I mean, I always think John Rawlins should be high up there, but because they don't get as much coverage as all these others. Because everybody watches IFL, don't they? And IFL, I told you months ago, the the interview, the same 19, 20 people, don't they? There's more than 20 people in the boxing community, isn't there, Steve? But these same 20 people, they do views. So they interview them all the time, and they're constantly in people's head. I mean, have you seen how many videos Eddie Hearn's done in the last five weeks? No. There's over 200 videos, isn't there, on YouTube alone? He's doing interview after interview after interview every day. If you're doing eight and nine interviews a day over a week, what's that, 60? Right? Five weeks, that's 300. So he hasn't done that many, but he's done a lot. So if you're constantly out there, people are going to think, do you know what, I didn't like what I said there is an helmet. Do you know what I mean? But I don't know, it is what it isn't, isn't it? He, he's drowning everybody out, isn't he, Eddie, at the moment, isn't he? With platforms. But he gets it, doesn't he? He's worked hard, and he? He's an hard worker, look. I give him loads of stick for all sorts of stuff, but you've got to give him credit. He gets up in the morning and he goes to work, doesn't he? Well, he doesn't at the moment, like, but he's camped in his bedroom, isn't he? So, there's something not right, isn't there? <laughs> this is why we love this sport so much. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. Rough, tough, rugged! You like that one, don't you, Steve? I like that one. I like being. Being's my favourite. 
Bean's your man, and I've I've seen a photograph of you actually sat next to Bean at a show. I've you seen one. Like yeah, I've seen one of you and Frampton as well. I see a picture of you and Frampton. You get on with him, don't you? Uh, yeah, I get on with everybody. I've got no beef in the box. Yeah, I ain't got no beef, me. I just call it straight, don't we? We just call it straight, Steve, don't we? So. Uh, <laughs> so, alright then, well listen, thanks for coming on, and uh, all the best to you and your family, keep isolating, and I'll speak to you soon. And shout out to South Yorkshire Packaging. South, York South Yorkshire Packaging UK Limited, Coca-Cola, and Innovation right. Alloys, given ledger frames, which they forgot to put on, ledger frames, Cunningsborough, alright? Yeah. Peace yeah. out. Okay. Right, right. And you too can join Steve Wellins on his podcast, The Boxing Asylum. I think they've been going now for nearly f getting on for 400 episodes. What's that, eight years? Seven, eight year. Andy Patterson, Dave the Hater Lowback, Steve Wellins, Ozzy Smith, Smido. But it's all good stuff. It's all good, positive, positive stuff. So. Peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Uh, I'm going to get this sent now to uh, to my tech guy. We're going to put an entrance and an ending, and uh, that should be good enough. All right, so peace out. <laughs> you like that one didn't you right first of all i just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing it means a lot to me because uh, we're on this journey together aren't we so anybody got any ideas for the channel fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and south yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking